finally back to living on the hook. Um, just took Carl out of Panama Marina and made this little passage over here to Isla Lentan. It's a little bit like coming home because I spent quite some time here too last year. And there was a, it's a freaky passage going in and out of Panama Marina because it's quite reefy and there's a big, uh, you know, big wave standing on it. But it was actually not too bad today. And outside we had like two and a half, three meters wave, so it was. Uh, it was nice, splashy, and um, it was just cool to take Carl out and everything was working fine. The engine was running really well and it was, it's a nice sunny day, it's a bit breezy and even though it was just a very small jump from Panama Marina to San Antonio, it's just good to, to be out and about and to see that the, work is, the boat is working fine and you know that it's actually happening again. And, oh. So it has taken not even two weeks to get out of the marina, which is awesome. Um, but actually, well, mainly because I, I had a friend over for giving me a hand. And uh, so it's just, when, when I first arrived, I was a bit down and I, you know, I was all by myself and nothing was working and I touched this and that and everything was breaking again. I got frustrated and I was like, damn it, you know, I left a working boat. And I, I, when I left, I was comfortable with the boat. And now I'm back, you know, with all, all of a sudden, all these fears and all of a sudden, like looking at things, not knowing what to do. So it took me a time to groove in. And, and then I started a couple of projects, um, but still, you know, it's, it's difficult to do some things if you're by yourself. So it was awesome that Maria came over to give me a hand. Um, we had to fix um, a part of the halyard of the, of the jib because uh, it was kind of ripped apart. So she showed me how to serve uh, the, the halyard because it had like, these little pokey things coming out because it's at the mast, it's like it's like um, held by a metal thing. So it always rubs there. So there's like little pokey things from the wire coming out. So we served it together. So that was, that was pretty cool because she used to work on traditional yachts and you know, like traditional sailboats and um, that's where she learned all that stuff and now she can you know she can teach it to me which is awesome Also that thing on the mast broke, so I, I got it made uh, in Cologne, like they actually needed just five minutes to do it and put it back onto the mast, so that's fixed and did a couple of small projects, but actually, you know, it didn't really take that much to get out of the marina and uh, it's just great. I had gotten uh, a new lid for the coolant for the coolant tank because the old one was really rusty and it was really difficult to actually open and close it so I brought a new shiny lid and uh, cleaned the, the old part a little bit and put the new lid on. Yeah, I'm sure Carl was happy about that.
My old starting battery had been down when I when I came back to Carl, so I had to buy a new starting battery. And the terminals of the new battery were actually larger than the old ones, so uh, first thing we had to do was drill open the, the cable shoes a little bit for the cables to fit onto the battery. And we connected the starting battery back to the engine, but still the engine wouldn't fire up, so we went and... Um, Next thing we did was check if there was actually diesel coming through the lines or if they're blocked in any ways. So usually you start from the tank towards the engine, you work your way through and it's quite a messy business because you actually have to suck on the diesel lines and then the diesel comes all into your mouth and yeah, it's not very it's not very nice but has to be done. The good thing was that there was actually diesel coming through and the lines weren't blocked at all. So we, we went on trying. We also tried to put some WD-40 into the air intake just to, you know, to initiate the, the starting of the engine, but that wouldn't work either. So when we're trying to air out the, the, the nut of the injection pump, there was uh, no fuel coming and um, also at the injectors it was completely dry. So what we did was a little trick and we actually filled some diesel into the injection pump itself. So we would have some diesel there that we could pump into the injectors and then hope to start the engine and with the engine running, you know, having the fuel feeding after that. And actually, eventually, after playing around with the injectors for quite some time, Carl finally decided that he was going to fire up. And uh, that was a pretty, pretty great moment. And um, it's always good to hear your engine running. It gives you, <laughs> gives you a good, uh, confident feeling and a bit of trust back into your boat. Um, and once the, the engine was running, we, we put it in gear to see if everything Everything was working fine, and uh, Maria taught me that if you put a big screwdriver to the to the housing of the engine, that you can actually hear if the if the pistons are, are going well and if everything sounds uh, good inside the engine. So that was a great new thing to learn for me. But actually, you know, it didn't really take that much to get out of the marina and. Uh, it's just great. Let's see, you know, we're gonna go and do some grocery shopping and then tomorrow night it's time for the big jump, or like, well, big jump to, to the Samlas Islands again, to go through the rest of the work list of Carl. But more about that next week.